the Catholicism is coming through. On that walking, it's a little bit easier because you just walk area and you try to watch for anybody who might be red dogging in from linebacker position. And um, you can usually throw a cross body block on him when he's crossing the line. Your man usually will be too slow to get in on the passer. Um, we've been playing now for four years. I was wondering, are there any games which stand out in your memory as being uh, especially exciting or memorable to you? Well, I think the Haverford game our freshman year, which we won 60 to 6, was quite an outstanding game. I think another game which is outstanding to me was the Hamilton game up at Hamilton last year, which we lost by four points, but which I think was one of the toughest games that we as a team have played. And also, I think that this year's first two games have been outstanding as a, a real team effort. And I think that the, the remaining three games are going to show us more of it. And uh, we're really looking forward to this team. Well, that's good to hear because they're going to be three very important games. One final question. Um, you're going to be playing defense also, probably, during the final three games at some point or another. As a defensive end, what do you find is your toughest assignment against uh, a good offense? Well, uh, probably the toughest assignment as an end is uh, the sweep. And, uh, you always have to watch for usually a guard pulling out and then two more backs coming. And uh, usually it's the end assignment to, to try to take out as much of the interference as possible so that the linebacker can make a tackle. And uh, this week with John Hopkins, we have a problem with a lot of cross blocking the line so that we have to watch for the offensive end going down the line and a guard or tackle pulling out. And uh, so we have to be ready to close in real quickly. Now it's been a pleasure having you on the show, and we want to wish you the best of luck Saturday and for the rest of the year. Thank you very much, Mike. This has been the WSRN pregame show brought to you by the Variety Corner in Swarthmore. And now stay tuned for Swarthmore football. WSRN, Swarthmore College Radio, 640 on your dial. Time is 1.52, and it's time for Swarthmore football. <laughs> Alburn reporting to you from Homewood Field at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. We'll be having this kickoff shortly in this Hopkins-Swarthmore football game. The first half of the game is being brought to you by the Swarthmore Hardware Company and by the Swarthmore Society of Quink. Swarthmore comes into the game with a perfect 3-0 record in mass tax play. The Garnet has a 3-1 overall record. Hopkins is winless to date with an 0-2-1 slate in the conference and an 0-4-1 mark overall. The rivalry between the schools dates back to 1893 with Swarthmore holding a 31-14-2 series advantage over the Blue Jays. The weather is overcast and fairly mild here. The field is rock hard and in ragged condition. At about 2.30, there'll be a cross-country meet starting here between Swarthmore and Hopkins. Right now, the Swarthmore runners are loosening up around the track. And as the Johns Hopkins marching band moves into the stands, here's Mike Halpern with today's starting lineup. Thank you, Frank. First for Johns Hopkins University, the home team, starting at left end, 
He's the captain of this team, and he's a league all-star, number 81, Mike Otis, 6'1", 173. At left tackle, number 75, Bill Hunt, 6'1", 205. At left guard, number 65, Dennis Carrizano, 5'8", 180 pounds. The center is number 52, Rip Lehman, 6 feet, 190 pounds. At right guard, number 67, Ray Nunnally, 6 feet tall, 175 pounds. At right tackle, number 78, Art Hinato, 6 feet tall, 201 pounds. And at right end, number 84, Bill Nickel, 6 feet tall, 175 pounds. At tailback will be either number 10, Jim Callie, 5'9", 160 pounds, or number 12, Mike Shaw, 5'10", 150 pounds. At quarterback will be number 11, Phil Parsmore, 5'11", 175. At wingback will be number 23, Wally Siggers, 5'9", 175. And at fullback, number 31, Bob Shannon, 5'9", 160 pounds. Now for the Garnet, there are many changes and we haven't caught up with all of them as yet. But here is what we understand will be the starting lineup. At flanker back will be number 83, the freshman Taylor Cope. At left tackle will probably be Frank Apfel, number 72. At left guard, number 60, John Stewart. At center, this week's co-captain, number 51, Steve Gessner. At right guard will be Howard Bulalate, number 76. At right tackle will be number 73, Minnow Williams. At right end will be number 82, Fred Montgomery. In the backfield, the quarterback will be number 11, John Summerton. At left half will be number 23, Dick Newman. At right half will be number 20, Rich Yeager. And at fullback, number 25, Ray Sapp. Now listen to this word. You know, it's hard to think of a store that's more useful in so many ways as a good hardware shop. And when you think of a quality hardware store in the Ville, you naturally think of the Swarthmore Hardware Company at 11 South Chester Road. The hardware company carries a fine selection of electric appliances, heaters, toasters, percolators, hair dryers, electric irons, and more. A complete line of Rubbermaid products is also stocked there. This includes such useful items as dish racks and multi-purpose baskets. Swarthmore Hardware Company is also your supplier of famous M8 Ruder high-quality paint at a competitive price. As winter rolls around and it becomes time to refinish the frat houses, it's a good idea to keep this great selection of paints in mind. Varnishes, shellacs, and applicator brushes fall into the same category. Last, but certainly not least, you can obtain screws, nuts, and washers of every size and variety as well as nails, light bulbs, and the usual hardware supplies which are so necessary. So make the Swarthmore Hardware Company a handy stop for you in the bill. The Hopkins football team has just come out onto the field, Mike. They're dressed in white pants, light blue jerseys with white numerals, and white and navy blue trim, blue, light blue and white helmets. Swarthmore has not yet reappeared from the dressing room. We expect them momentarily. We should have the kickoff in about two or three minutes. You know, on the face of it, it looks as if Hopkins, uh, it looks as if Hopkins uh, isn't uh, going to present a great challenge on the record, but we can't say that because uh, in Swarthmore's last game against their sinus, a team that tied Hopkins 6-6, uh, Swarthmore played a poor game and almost lost it, so the Garnet are going to have to play a good game because with every win, the, uh, with every game, the uh, possibility of the MAPCAC Conference Championship is on the line. Isn't that right, Mike? Yes, Frank, and it's pretty obvious that Coach Elverson has shaken up the club with several changes. We might mention that one of these changes was entirely uh, unpremeditated, and Mike Sinclair was declared ineligible by the conference on Tuesday of this week. So Mike can't play anymore this year. However, we were permitted to keep all our victories in the conference. 
because apparently this was an unknowing violation. Apparently, if you transfer from another school, you have to sit out two semesters rather than one. And Mike had sat out last spring, but was playing this fall. So we'll see what, what effect that'll have. And also, it's, the offensive line has been switched around, or so I hear from most of the players. It'll be interesting to see how they work out with a new combination. Mike Swarthmore has just reappeared on the field. Dressed in their white pants with garnet trim, garnet jerseys with white numerals and trim, and the garnet helmet. They're out at the center of the field now. Captain Flack, co captains Flack and Gessner for Swarthmore, Captain Odick or Hopkins. They're going to have to toss the coin after they introduce the ref. Against common opponents this year, there are only two. Swarthmore, as I said, edged her sign last time out two weeks ago by the score of 14 to 13. While in the second game of the season for Hopkins, the tied her sign at six to six. Barthmore defeated Franklin and Marshall in the second game of the season, 18 to nine, a team that defeated Hopkins 27 to 14. Barthmore has won the toss. They elect to receive. Hopkins will defend the East Coast. Barthmore at the West. Frank, we just might say a word about the captain of the Hopkins team, who is an outstanding end. This is his fourth year in the league, and everyone on our team has a very high regard for him. He's a fine blocker, excellent pass receiver, and he's probably one of the two best ends in the league, so it should be an interesting afternoon. On the near sideline for Hopkins is a Blue Jay, a student dressed up as one. But first, before the kickoff, our national anthem. Montgomery is one end, 
Abfell is the pack on that side, along with Leighton in the center. Back to you, Frank. That was a first down for Swarthmore. First and ten for the Garnet at midfield. Summerton set on the center. Takes the ball, hands off to Yeager, tries to diagonal off tackle. He gains about three yards. Tackle on the play by number 67, Ray Nunnell. The ball is on the 47 of Hopkins, second down and seven for the Garnet. Swarthmore, Setters, they come out of the huddle. Summerton, that's on the way again. It's the Fraser up the middle, and he goes down past the 40 to about the 39-yard line. First down, Swarthmore. Tackle once again by Ray Nunnally and by Dennis Farazano. Frank, on that left side, who opened up that hole was Bob Nussbaum at the tackle. And number 60, John Stewart at guard, and the center is Steve Gessner. Summerton set. Quick county. Pitches out to Yeager, trying to turn the left end. Yeager past the 35 to the 30 and driven out inside the 30. On the 29-yard line, first down, tackle by Phil Parthmore of Hopkins. And the Garnet is on the move. In fact, they spotted on the 28, first and 10. Frank, Wilbur Stream is in, in the backfield, and Wilbur threw an excellent block on that sweep. As he gave uh, Rich Yeager an extra seven yards. Fine play. Summerton brings the team out of the huddle. The quick snap and he hands to the streams going straight up the middle. He appears to have gotten to about the 25 yard line where he's met by a host of tacklers led by number 77, Jeff Greffer. On that play, Griffith has just come in for. Bill Patton on the defensive line. Swarthmore out of the huddle. Backfield chips to the right. The handoff to Fraser, who was racked up at the line of scrimmage without getting anywhere. Frank, if you remember what Minnow Williams said in the pregame show, he said that they wanted to score early and try and get up a drive, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're sticking to the ground and trying to get all those yards. But maybe here, John Summerton might throw the ball. Third and five on the 23. Swarthmore, set. Summerton fakes the pick out, hits the streams on the draw. He goes inside the 15 and inside the 10 to about the nine yard line. That was a very pretty fake by, by Summerton. Frank, they just ruled that Wilbur's knee hit up around the uh, 14, but he scrambled forward to the 9, so it's first and 10 on the 14. Summerton set over center. Hands off to Fraser. Fraser trying to sweep around the right side. He doesn't appear to have gained much more than a yard or so. And number 84, Bill Nickel. Number 65, Dennis Farazano making the tackle on that play. Number 60, Bill Pat goes in for number 77, Jeff Griffith, on the defensive line. Oh, there was a pickup of four yards after all. Second and six for the Garnet on the 10 of Hopkins. The Garnet is on the move. Backfield, chips to the right. With Jaeger now flanked out to the right. Summer to hands off to Fraser. Fraser goes right up the middle. Is tackled by Farazano. Uh, apparently, that's a gain of about three or four yards on the middle of a fall of a four yard play. This the third and two for the Garnet on the six yard line of Hopkins. Backfield again shifts right. Summerton, right over center. He hands off to Fraser again, going up the middle. He gets inside the five. Did he get the first down? First? First down? No. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The referee has made up his mind. First and goal for the Garnet on the three yard line. Fourth more set on the three. Summerton. Ready is Jaeger. Flanks out to the right. Summerton hands to Fraser, battling up the middle. And he scores. Touchdown, Swarthmore. 
fine extra effort by Toby Frazier. He would stop right short of the goal line, kept fighting, and finally fell into the end zone. And there's your first drive, six points on the scoreboard. With 10.40 remaining in the first quarter, the Garnets lead 6 nothing. Here's the extra point try. Pepper will kick, Holland will hold, Hollister will hold. If ball plays down, it's booted, it's up, and it is good. And the Garnet leads 7 nothing. Frank? Mike, that play covered 61 yards on... On 12 plays, 61 yards on 12 plays, all of it on the ground. They were just grinding it out with Fraser, Jaeger, and Streams all playing their roles, all getting good runs. Fraser vaulted over the uh, line, over an off tackle hole for the touchdown. With great second effort. Now the yarn set to kick off. Dick McCurdy is going to kick deep to receive for Hopkins. Number 11, Car 4. Number 81, Otis, and 14, Schaefer. The kick is short. Otis goes for it, picks it up on past the 15, to the 20. Cuts back on the 25, and that's where he is down. Andy Weinstein makes the stop. Ball is spotted right on the 25, first and 10 for Hopkins. We'll see what they can do on offense now. Defensive line, of course, for Absol, Blumberg, Thornton, and Layton, Parthmore. No, Shaw is the quarterback. Shaw set under center, hands off to number 31 to the fullback. Bob Shannon goes up the middle for four yards. Second down and six. Frank, John Stewart made the tackle, I believe. But the Stewart is his linebacker. Kamen is his linebacker. Chris King is his linebacker. And Weinstein is his linebacker. Okay, Frank? Mike Shaw, set under center. He hands off again to Shannon, trying to turn the left side, and he is really clobbered after he crosses the 30 and gets to about the 33. Tackled by Wilbert Streams, Andy Weinstein, and John Stewart. And they really rock. It will be third down. There's four to go. They spot the ball on the 31 yard line. Hopkins out of the huddle. Shaw going back to pass, and he is tackled from behind by Bull Layton. And by Eric Blumberg. Ball is now spotted, Mike, on the 25 yard line, which is right where they started from. It's fourth and 10, and they'll have to pick. And the cross country meet has just started. Bill Nickel will punt. Dick Newman, single safety for Swarthmore on about the Swarthmore 35. Here's the kick, he gets it away. Newman takes on the 39. He's up to the 40, the 45, he spins around and uh, I think they'll mark the four at the 45, although he was driven back to about the 42. Bill Hunt, number 75, and number 51, Mark Perlmutter, made the stop. Well, it's spot forward progress on the 44, so it will be first and 10 for the Garnet. Time remaining in the first period. That's seven minutes, 45 seconds. Frank Hopkins seems to be in a 6-2-3 and often a 5-3-3. Three, three. That's what they're playing on uh, defense. Swarthmore set at the line of scrimmage. Summerton makes two fakes. He hands off to Jaeger. Jaeger drives across the 45, across midfield, and drags about five Hopkins guys for another seven or eight yards. And the ball is now spotted. On the 42 of Hopkins, first and 10, Perlmutter finally brought Jaeger down, but he was running like a man possessed on that play. Dragging along a host of tacklers with him. First and 10 for the Garnet. Ray Sass is coming to fullback right now, replacing Wilbur Stream. 
Swarthmore set at the line of scrimmage. Summerton waiting, the backfield shifts right. Summerton hands off to Fraser. Fraser drives across the 40 until about the 38-yard line. Dennis Marizano stops him. Frank, Hopkins right now is in a defense very similar to ours, except they don't have the big boys. They have four linebackers and three deep men. And we should be able to run on this, which we're doing pretty consistently. Second and seven for the Garnet on the 39. Number and set. He calls the signal. He hands off to Fraser, and it's a busted play as Toby runs into his own man. He still picks up about two yards. And it will be third down and six to go for Swarthmore. Joe Thornton's come in on offense, replacing Bob Nussbaum at the left tackle position. Swarthmore has the ball on the Hopkins, 37. They're driving again. Griffith goes in for Perlmutter. The defensive line of Hopkins. Summerton set under center. Cole signal fakes, hands up to Ray Sass, up the middle. And Sass drives forward to about the 31-yard line. Another spot on the 32. And they're calling for a measurement. Frank, with five minutes to go in the first quarter, the uh, Hopkins team has run one series of downs. This is what you call ball control. Ten minutes, and we've given them four plays. It's the first down for the Garnet, and we're driving again. First and ten for Swarthmore on the Hopkins 32. Swarthmore has, run nothing, has had nothing but running plays so far. They've just been grinding it out on the ground. Summerton leads the team out of the huddle. He's set under center. Pitches out to Jaeger, trying to turn the left side. Jaeger is inside the 25 before he is brought down by, by number 77, Griffith. And by number 65, Dennis Sarazano. The ball is on the 25-yard line. Second down and three to go for Swarthmore. Official for some reason it stopped the game. He was speaking to Summerton. I'm not sure what happened. He uh, apparently was telling the sportsman people on the sidelines to move to their bench. Just set it to line of scrimmage. Summerton on a quick count hands off to the Sass. Sass going up the middle for about two yards. Tackled by Bill Patton and by Dennis Farazana. And once again, the officials are calling for a measurement as the ball is on either the 22 or the 23. No, they're not. It's not a first down by March two feet, and they can see that, so they don't need the chains brought in. Third and about two feet for Swarthmore on the 23. Backfield, shifts right. Summer to say, hands off to Sass. Busts the left side. Excuse me, that's Toby Fraser, not fast. He busts the left side for four yards and another first down for Swarthmore on the 17-yard line of Hopkins. Tackled by Dennis Farazano again. He seems to be making all the stops. Frank, we have a big weight advantage in the middle of the line, and we're obviously capitalizing on that so far in the game. All right, Summerton leads the team to the line of scrimmage. Backfield again shifts right. Summerton set. Takes the pitch out, hands off to Sass on the draw play. Sass inside the 15, where Phil Parkmore grabs it. We'll see where they spot the ball. On about the 14. 14 it is. Second down and five for Sparkmore. Nice. Summerton set. Following the signal. The long count and he hands off around the right side to Fraser, who doesn't go very far. Well, he's on the 10 there. Toby Fraser to the 10. 
This will be third down for Swarthmore, and about two to go. Nato and Nunnally make the stop on that play. Swarthmore has the ball in the Hopkins 10, third and three. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. Backfield shifts left. Hand off to Rich Yeager. Yeager is in for the touchdown. As Yeager broke through the middle, was grabbed by two tackles at the three, but still dragged him along for two more yards and then fell into the end zone. And with one minute and 45 seconds left in the first quarter, it's Swarthmore 13, Hopkins nothing. Again, it was um, that extra hard running. As Yeager, as Frazier did on the first touchdown, pulled his way, kept going for the score. Here's the extra point kick. Halster holds, the kick is up, it looks good, it is good, and the score is 14 to nothing in favor of Swarthmore. That drive covered 10 plays, and they went 56 yards in that time. As on the first drive, it was all running. This time, Rich Yeager was the big runner with Toby Fraser and Ray Sass adding the support. The Garners on that drive picked up three first downs. And the touchdown play was a 10-yard run by Rich Yeager, which is really a display of excellent power. Now it's 14 nothing. Swarthmore is getting set to kick off. Kicking tee is out, and McCurdy is placing the ball down. Deep to receive, Odick, Parthmore, and Shannon. Try and spot that kicking team. Hollister, and Jaeger, and Weinstein, and Kamen on the end. Here's the kick. Good kick. Taken by Parthmore on the 15. Parthmore cutting to his right, across the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and driven down as he crosses the 30-yard line. Tackle made by, uh, opened by Chris King. The ball is spotted on the 31-yard line of Hopkins, first and 10 for the Blue Jays. Swarthmore leads, 14-0. Frank McCurdy, Cope, and Jaeger are our deep men in the secondary. I believe this is the first time the Taylor has been in our deep pass defense. Handoff is to Parthmore going up the middle. He gains about one or one yard. It'll be second and nine from the 32. Shaw calling a signal. Rolling around to the right and snowed down from behind. By number 60, John Stewart. A fine defensive play as John broke through. He chased him. He chased him. Short didn't see him. Stewart snuck up on him from behind. Drove him down on the 27-yard line. Third and 14. Hoffman goes in for Layton for Swarthmore. Shaw calling his signals. He's going back to pass. He's throwing for Nickel. Nickel has it on the 41-yard line. And he's down to the Swarthmore 35. Taylor Cope and, and Dick McCurdy were right next to him, but Nickel reached up and caught that ball. Ball spotted on the 37 of Swarthmore, and this is the first first and 10 for Hopkins of the game. Funny, Frank, how one pass can bring so many people to life. This is one of the quietest crowds I've ever seen, but now they're up and they're trying to spur Hopkins on towards the touchdown and put him back in the ball game. Quarter has just run out, Frank. So the score at the end of the first quarter is Swarthmore 14, Hopkins nothing. To recap that a little bit of uh, first quarter, the Garnet got the opening kickoff and drove 61 yards in 12 plays, scored on Frazier's run of three yards for the touchdown. This uh, drive took five minutes and 20 seconds. The Garnet then kicked, Pfeffer kicked the extra points, then the Garnet kicked off, Hopkins 
didn't do anything. Then we got the ball on our own 44 and went 56 yards with Jaeger going the final 10 for the touchdown with a minute 45 left. Now we have Hopkins coming back from the kickoff with a long pass play. And they have the ball on our 36 yard line. Frank? We remind you that this first half is being brought to you by the Swarthmore Hardware Company and by Quink. Shaw sets over center, runs up the middle himself, gets to about the 34 yard line. Taylor Cope makes the tackle. Gain of three and it's second down and seven for Hopkins on the Swarthmore 34. Hopkins out of the huddle. Draw a quarterback. He goes straight back to pass, throws for Odick, and it was overthrown. Odick was clear on the 23 yard line as he ran a, a pattern flaring left but it was overthrown. So it will be third and seven on the 34 yard line. For Hopkins, Nunnally goes in for Griffith. And as they come out of the huddle now, Shaw still quarterback. Under center, he goes back to throw. Fakes is going, he's going to throw. And it's intercepted by Rick Jaeger on the 28 yard line. Jaeger. Brings it up to about the 33. That was intended for Schaefer, for Henry Schaefer. But Rich Yeager, at the last minute, cut in front of him, grabbed the ball, and ran it back to the five yards to the 33. Schaefer wanted that ball so badly, he tried to take it back from Rich while he's running, but Yeager held on. Warthmore has the ball on the Warthmore 33. First and 10. Summerton with a quick count. He's going back to pass. First pass of the game is intended for Cope. Cope has it. The 35. Cope is free. He's the 20 to the 10. Touchdown, Swarthmore. Jim Cowley was defending on the play. Cope was two steps behind him. The pass just floated into his hands at about the 36 yard line. Cope suddenly put on a burst of speed. Cowley dove, missed. Swarthmore then dove and missed at the 15. And Taylor with home free, Swarthmore leads 20 to nothing. With 13 minutes and 45 seconds left in the first half. Pepper will kick. Hollister will hold. Hollister placed the ball down. The kick is good and it's 21 nothing, Swarthmore. That was no drive at all. It was just one play, a 68 to 67 yard pass play from Summerton to Taylor Co. Frank, on that play, it looked like that defensive back had Taylor Cope. I mean, after he caught the ball, but apparently he just sort of mistimed his uh, tackle and Taylor sort of shook him on the ankle there and went the rest of the way. It was nice to see John Summerton on cork one there. It was a high pass but he got it way out there to Taylor Cope on the uh, left sideline. Well, Taylor shifted gears on that one. That was a very good strategy, though. We hadn't thrown a pass up until that play, and boy, we had him set up. Uh, that was obvious. So the Garnet leads 21 nothing, and McCurdy will kick off. Shannon, Odick, and Schaefer are deep. McCarty comes up, he boots the ball, it's a short kick, it's going to be taken by Nickel on the 25, to the 30, to the 35, Cope misses him, and he gets to about the 38, before Dick came and grabs him and really throws him back, and they're going to spot the ball on the 35 where came and threw him back to him, not apparently uh, because Nickel was still trying to go, Griffith comes out, Placed by Nunnally. The offensive line for Hopkins. They have the ball on the on their own 35. There's a timeout on the field. Now this word. You know, it's hard to think of a store that's more useful in so many ways as a good hardware shop. And when you think of a quality hardware store in the Ville, you naturally think of the Swarthmore Hardware Company 
at number 11 South Chester Road. The hardware company carries a fine collection of electrical appliances, heaters, toasters, percolators, hair dryers, electric irons, and more. A complete line of rubber-made products is also stocked there. This includes such useful items as dish racks and multi-purpose baskets. The Swarthmore Hardware Company is also your supplier of famous M.A. Bruder high-quality paint at a competitive price. As winter rolls around and it becomes time to refinish the frat houses, it's a good idea to keep this great selection of paints in mind. Varnishes, shellac, and applicator brushes fall into the same category. Last but certainly not least, you can obtain screws, nuts, and washers of every size and variety, as well as nails, light bulbs, and the usual hardware supplies which are so necessary. So make the Swarthmore Hardware Co Company a handy stop for you in the Ville. We're ready to play against 1320 left in the half. Hopkins set at the line of scrimmage. Shaw going straight back to pass. He's throwing for Odick. And it's overthrown. Odick was in the clear at the Swarthmore 35. Cope was defending on the play, and he was, he was just beaten by two steps. Well, that's twice now, Frank, in the last two series that Odick uh, has been way out in the clear, and if the quarterback had hit him, we would have been in a lot of trouble. Griffith in for Nunnally now for Hopkins. They come to the line of scrimmage again on the 35, second and 10. Shaw going back, and he hands off on a delay, and a draw to Schaefer. Schaefer is really wiped out on about the 31 by Stewart. Stewart's playing a fine game. He's analyzed most every play, and he's right on the spot. The guard of defense seems to uh, be handling their running game very well, but so far, Odick has been able to get free, and that's our only problem. Here's Hopkins on their 31, third, and 14. Shaw set over center. Going back to throw, and he is he is tackled by Stewart again, and by Eric Blumberg. This time he is dropped back on the 23, and Hopkins is really moving backwards fast. Fourth down and loads of yardage. Fourth and about 20. Two yards, so they'll have to punt. Nickel to punt. Newman in single safety for Swarthmore on his own 35. Nickel standing on his 11. Ball signals it's a low pass from center. It's almost blocked by Weinstein. It's a good kick, though. Taken by Newman on the 33 to the 35. He dances around, cuts towards the sidelines. The flag is thrown as he crosses the 40 yard line. He stopped on the 41, but there was a flag thrown back there. Flipping against Swarthmore. We think it was against Taylor Cope. And that'll bring the ball back 15 yards to the 23. And here's Mike for some play-by-play. -play. Dick Kamen has come in as flanker replacing Taylor Cope now. And I noticed that Minnow Williams is in his tackle also, replacing Frank Apfel. Summerton brings the team to the line of scrimmage. He fakes a pass, and he hands to Ray Sass, who goes through the right side, up across the 30 to the 31. Tackle was made by number 11, Phil Parsmore, and number 75, Bill Hunt. Mike, we've noticed that Sass' uh, running style for the year has consisted mainly of just running straight ahead, but it's perfectly suited to the top defense. Lyle Snyder has come in at tackle, replacing Nussbaum now. Summerton hands the ball off to, gosh, I don't know, guy that got swallowed up. That was uh, McCurdy who's in the backfield now. That'll make it third down and about one yard or less. Third and one, backfield. McCurdy shifts to the right, Cayman's out on the left. 
Summerton hands to Newman, and he's piled up way short, driven all the way back by a whole pile of ball players. So the Garnet will have to kick now. This will be the first punting situation. Mike Sinclair, who, as we said, uh, is ineligible for the rest of the game this year, has just come up to the booth, and we'll be talking with him at halftime. With 10 minutes to go in the half, Summerton drops back to his own 16 to kick. The bad pass, he gets it away. It's a high, good kick. It's driving him or part more back to the 21. He's to the 30. And he, he hits fumble, and the Garnet has the Garnet has recovered it, I believe, on the 34. Frank, can you spot who got it? Number 50, Fred Webster fell on that ball. All right, the Garnet takes over, first and 10 on the 34. Webster is staying in, he'll be at center on this series of downs instead of Gessner. That was a fine punt by John Summerton. All right, first and 10, Summerton. All the signals, the backfield shifts to the left. Summerton gives to the second man through, who, which, who is Newman. Newman gets about a half a yard. Our power runners are out, and, and now they're just not dragging the Hopkins tacklers along when they uh, wrap their arms around them. McCur there was a very good fake to McCurdy, the, face of the first man through, before he handed to Newman. Summerton calls signals again. The backfield now shifts to the right. He gives to Newman, who goes forward just shy of the 30-yard line. So that'll make it third down and approximately six and a half to go, six yards to go for a first down. Jeff Griffith again was in on that tackle. All right, here's a big play. He throws to Kamen, and Kamen grabs it and knocks his way forward to the 19, and there's a piling on penalty uh, on number 81, Odick, who uh, hit Kamen after he was already down on that play, and Kamen's a little shaken up. It's a good play, straight pass to Kamen, cutting across the middle. That was a great looking pass. Summerton took one step back, immediately threw to Kamen, who by that point was about five yards past the line of scrimmage. Kamen got to the 19 where Parthmore brought him down. Odick uh, jumped on unnecessarily, and now it's first and goal for Swarthmore on the 10. Seven and a half minutes left in this second quarter. Curdy is flanked out to the right, Kamen to the left. Summerton pitches to Newman. He's at the 10, 9, and forward to about the eight yard line where he's wrapped up. See who made the tackle, he's still down. John Sweeney, number 87, was the man who made the tackle. And there's pulling the face mask, personal foul, which moves the ball inside the five to about the four yard line and makes it an automatic first down. First and goal. Summerton over center. Backfield shifts to the right. He pitches to Newman. He's wrapped up way back by number 87, Sweeney, on the seven yard line. That play doesn't work, right? Six minutes, 20 seconds to go in the half. Garnet leads 21 to nothing. We have the ball. Second down. Goal to go on the seventh. Summerton bends over center, calls the signal. The backfield shifts to the right. John rolling to the left. He's going to throw. He's got Kamen, and it's off his fingertips in the end zone. He was being de defended against by number 10, Jim Cowley, who did a good job on the play. And the pass goes incomplete, and it'll be third down now on the seventh.
I'd like to remind you that our co-sponsor for this game is the Swarthmore Society of Queens. Society of Managers operate refreshment stands at home games, and we hope you'll patronize them next week. Summerton calls signals, hands to Jaeger, who bounces forward all the way to the three. Mike Dodick, the captain, made the tackle on the play. There you saw the difference. Uh, Jaeger would stop, but he kept going. All right, fourth down, three yards to go for a touchdown. And here's the big play in the first half with five and a half minutes to go until halftime. Summerton brings the team to the line of scrimmage. They shift right. He calls signal. He pitches to Newman, who's going to pass. And it's to Weinstein, and it's a touchdown in the deep right-hand corner of the end zone. And the Garnet leads 27 nothing. And that play they had Jaeger flanked out to the right, and Weinstein going from a tight right end position. They both flared right, Weinstein going deeper. I think the defender uh, seemed to be keying on Jaeger on the play. Newman went straight back as he did twice in that FNM game and threw a touchdown pass. Stick is now three for three on passes this year, and he had three touchdowns. Pepper will kick. Hollister to hold. The ball is down. Kick is up. It's good. And it's Swarthmore, 28. Hopkins, nothing, with five minutes and 20 seconds left in this first half. Nothing worth more. I think the only game that I've seen recently that's comparable to this was the game we had up at our sinus last year, Mac, when we won 48 nothing, and I believe scored 35 points by four halftime. I think a lot of Swarthmore boys who haven't had a chance to play since all the games have been tight so far will be in. Number 71, Jim Buchanan, is in on the kick team right now. See that new face. Number 80, John Ellis, also is in on the play, I believe. Oh, Hell, they takes it at the 8. He's the 20, 25, 30, 35, and he goes right over to the 39, 8-yard line where he's tackled by number 60, John Stewart. Actually, on that play, number 31, Hollister, fell down in front of Otis. Oda tripped over him, and Stewart just landed on him to uh, finish up the play, but John needn't have done that because once his knee hit the ground, it was dead. It's a fine run back, though. First and 10 for Hopkins on their own 39. Quarterback goes back to pass. He fires. It's almost intercepted by Weinstein with a short sideline pass on the right side. Five-yard pass intended for number 14, Henry Schaefer. Weinstein a little annoyed with himself. He might have had another touchdown. That play, Schaefer almost caught it on the rebound off Weinstein's fingertips. Shaw called signal. Takes it, pitches out to number 14, Henry Schaefer, who drives forward to the 45-yard line, where Blumberg and Stewart, that duo, makes the tackle. That'll make it third down and four from the 45-yard line. Toby Fraser is now in at defensive back of the Garnet, along with McCurdy and Jaeger. Jaeger has gone out, and Taylor Cope is now in at defensive back. Shaw calls signal. Goes back to pass. He fakes. Now he's going to run, but he doesn't go anywhere as Tom Kaufman grabs him, trips him up on the 43-yard line. A loss of two. It'll be fourth down and seven, and that's a kicking situation. Tom is playing for the first time, I believe, since the uh, Franklin and Marshall game, where he re-injured the knee that he had hurt in the scrimmage game against Drexel. And now they're set to kick. Newman's back around the 25. 
Bill Nichols takes the low pass, goes back to kick, and he just gets it away, but it's a fine kick. Back down to the 20. 25 is Newman. 30, and he's finally brought down on the 25-yard line. Number 87, John Sweeney made the tackle. Cross country meet has ended. I don't know who's won it. We'll try and get the score on that as soon as possible. All right, first and ten. Holland in the quarterback. He pitches to Newman, who circles the end, runs upfield, all the way up to the 34 yard line. Sweep around the right side. Number 65 made the tackle, Dennis Farazano. Holland call signal, backfield shifts to the left. He gives to Jaeger, who bowls his way up to the 38-yard line, which is the first down. Dave Dodson has come into the Swarthmore line at offensive guard for John Stewart. I believe this is the uh, first action that Dave has seen other than on kicking squad. Okay, Holland bends over center. He hands to Newman. There's a penalty flag. Newman falls forward across the 40. Let's see what the penalty is. Let's try and get all the Garnet players here. Just down with the tackle. Jim Flack is in at guard. Dotson is in. Jester is in. Dick McCurdy has just come in for Rich Yeager. Holding penalty on that play moves the ball all the way back to the fourth more 24, where it will be a lot of yards. 25 yards to go for a first down. And they call it first and 25. Holland calls the backfield just to the left. That is the fullback. McCurdy takes the pitch out. Tries to go around the end, and he's upended by number 10, I believe, Jim Talley, as he got up to the 27 yard line. Black in on this series of down, playing for the first time since the uh, opening kickoff against Franklin and Marshall. He hurt his, hurt his leg back in the Dickinson game. Three minutes to go in the half. Holland, call signal. Pitches to Newman who gives to McCurdy. The ball bounces forward and Hopkins has recovered the loose ball on the fourth floor 36. It was a double handoff. It went out of uh, McCurdy's hands and went forward about 10 yards. And Frank, did you see who recovered the ball for Hopkins? Well, I saw that Nussbaum was the man in pursuit for Swarthmore who just missed out. That ball was covered by number 11, Phil Parthmore. Now Hopkins gets a break here with three minutes to go in the half. Shaw, quarterback, call signals, goes straight back to pass. And he's note under on the 46. Kamen is in on the tackle. Blumberg is in there. And it looks like Joe Thornton, Joe Thornton also in there. On that play, they had uh, number 21, Jeff Weidig, and number 81, Odick, blaring, both blaring long right from left end and from uh, the halfback position. Odick was free again. Shaw back to pass. He's forced out of the pocket. He's rolling. He throws. It's complete to Odick. No, he drops the ball. So that will make it third down on the 44-yard line. Third and 17. 
They're going to rush is very strong, Frank, and they're forcing the quarterback to run all over the place to get the ball downfield. Our deep pass defense, though, has not been impressive. Uh, it's only the rush and also the inaccuracy of their quarterback's arm, Shaw's arm, that's saving us so far. All right, third down. Shaw, call signal. Back to pass. Somebody lost the helmet. Long pass. Cope. Now, let's see what they call it. Cope intercepted the ball on the 11, it looks like. And it's the Garnet's football. Taylor Cope picked it off. Long, wobbly pass. He got position and picked it off down at the 11. Cope and Cope was back there along with Bill Nickel, number 84. And they both uh, jumped for the ball simultaneously, but Taylor managed to get in front of Nickel. Grabbed the ball and they fell down uh, immediately. Had, had Shaw seen it, Odick was completely wide open, having cut right near the sideline at about the 20. All right, Holland calls signals. He gives the ball to Jaeger, who drives off left tackle straight ahead. And he gets up to about the 13-yard line. That'll make it a second down play. About eight to go. Two minutes and 35 seconds remain in this first half. Frank, they've been having trouble with the clock. It's been running intermittently, so I don't know what, what's left. Backfield shifts to the left. Holland calls signals. Fake to Jaeger, rolls to his right, and he is stopped. He's got a yard, I believe, on the play up to the 14, maybe the 15. Good pursuit by the lineman on Hopkins. Thornton is in. Nussbaum is out at tackle. Third down for the Garnet. Six to go on their own 15-yard line. Holland, call signal. Pitches to Jaeger. Sweeps to the left side. He gets a block and moves forward across the 20 to about the 22-yard line. He's tackled by number 10, Jim Kelly. Layton goes out, and I believe Dotson is in as guard for the Garnet. That, makes, that gives the Garnet a first down. It's about a minute and a half by the scoreboard clock to go in the half. The Garnet leads 28 to nothing. All right, Kamen flanked out to the left. Holland over center. The backfield shifts to the right. Sass to the deep end. Sass gets the ball. He's got a nice hole. He's tackled by number 11. Phil Parsmore. He drives across the 25 to the 26-yard line. And... That is the end of the first half. The Garnet is leading 28 to nothing. Credit for that hole uh, had to go to Jim Black, who did something very difficult. He took out two men with one block, their middle linebacker and their right tackle. So now we'll review the first half scoring for you. Swarthmore scored four times twice in the first quarter, twice in the second. First quarter, they first went 61 yards on 12 plays, all on the ground with Jaeger, Fraser, and Stream sharing the running. Fraser scoring the touchdown from the three. Zach Pfeffer kicked the extra point. And we might mention that Pfeffer kicked all four extra points this time. He had missed those in the F&M game. And I think the reason for his new success was the change of ball holders for him. Randy Holland had not been placing the ball down well for him in F&M, and Hollister, Hollister has been doing an excellent job of placing the ball down for him. Swarthmore, after that score, which came with 10.40 left on the clock in the first quarter, Swarthmore then kicked to Hopkins, they had the ball for one series of downs, were forced to punt. Swarthmore took over possession on their own 44-yard line, proceeded to move the 56 yards for a score in 10 plays. Again, consecutive ground plays. This time it was Jaeger, Fraser, and Sash sharing the running. And Rich Jaeger really powered his way in for a touchdown from the 10-yard line. Pepper again kicked the extra point, and it was 14-0 at the quarter. Hopkins 
ran off their one good offensive play at the end of the quarter as uh, Shaw threw 36 yards to Bill Nickel to put the ball down on the fourth and were 37, but the defense held. And then Rich Yeager intercepted a pass, 10 to threat. Swarthmore took over possession after that interception on their own 32-yard line. And the 62 yards to the third touchdown were covered in only one play, a pass play from John Summerton to Tyler Cope. This came with 13.45 remaining in the first half. Pepper kicked the extra point. It was 21-0. Hopkins again failed to move the ball when they had it. They had to, they had to kick again to Swarthmore. Swarthmore also failed to move it. They had to kick again to Hopkins. But number 11, Phil Parthmore, received the Hopkins, received the punt for Hopkins and fumbled on his own 34-yard line where Fred Webster fell on the ball. And uh, then the Garnet ran two line plays by Dick Newman, the Rants took it down to the 28th, then Summerton threw again, he threw for Kamen, and Kamen brought it down to the 20, 10 yard penalty for piling on, brought the ball back to the 10 yard line, Newman ran for three yards and then they pulled his face mask and that gave Swarthmore the ball in the three, four plays later, Summerton pitched out to Newman. Newman went straight back through the same option pass that worked to perfection in the F&M game. This time he found Andy Weinstein three deep in the right corner of the end zone for the final touchdown. This is the 520 remaining in the half. Pepper added the kick. And so we have our halftime score of 28 to nothing. Hopkins won the cross-country meet. We see by the score of 28 to 29. This must be quite a disappointment for Swarthmore, having beaten Delaware and PMC in the last two weeks. Now we have Mike Sinclair up here in the booth with us, and uh, Mike Halpern is going to talk. Nice to see you, Mike. Uh, explain why you're up here rather than out there right now. Well, it's a long story, but the fact about you. That I transferred down here last year, last year in the fall semester, and the rule states you have to be at your school for a year before you're allowed to participate in the varsity sport. And I was not; I was only there for one semester, spring semester. Therefore, the rule states that I am an eligible play. So I'm not going to play the last three games. But the committee was very kind to us. And the usual case of an eligible player, in fact, their team has to forfeit all the games. Now, this would have made us 0-4 in the conference rather than 3 0 as we are now. So I'm really happy for the team, where it's one of those things for myself, I couldn't fight it. Uh, you were down here uh, last, let's see, last Thanks winter. Fall. Fall. Um, did you get a chance to meet this fellow Odick at all? Uh, he's quite an end from what we've seen. He's, he's quite good. He's better in lacrosse, I think, than football. I talked to him a few times. The guy I got to know best is Phil Parsons. You probably heard about him already. He played a pretty good ball for him. He's also quite good in the cross, too. Make sure stick to that. Uh, I know you haven't seen all the games. You got down here a little late, but it seems like this is a pretty easy game for us. Um, they're kind of small. We're sort of going right over them. Their line is not only small, but they're slower in our line, which makes it a lot easier. You beam the line, you beam everywhere. It's very nice. Uh, how about Taylor Cope and Dick Kamen, who are now going to play? At flanker, um, at what you've seen of them, uh, are they going to do a good job out there? Or? Looks like they're doing a real good job. As I was walking on the field, I heard Taylor Cope score on a 68-yard pass play. Good effort by him, and I saw Dick Kamen catch it. About a 12-yard look in it. Get the touchdown drive going down here at the end of the first half. Uh, Mike, are you going to play anything uh, now in the spring? Are you going to play lacrosse? Or? No, I don't believe I will. Uh, are you going to keep practicing with the team, or are you going to just sort of... Well, I'm sorry to say I'm not going to practice the team. I can't get any sense in y'all. It's my last year. If I was a junior, you know, a sophomore, I wouldn't mind. But I just, I just can't see it. I'm not going to turn pro anyway. 
Uh, what do you think our chances are now uh, off this performance for next week? Well, it looks pretty good. It looks really good to me. Get a lot of momentum driving today. Really put a lot of TMC next week. All right. This has been Mike Sinclair at halftime. And Mike, thanks a lot for coming by. Thank you. You know, it's hard to think of a store that's more useful in so many ways as a good hardware shop. And when you think of a quality hardware store in the mill, you naturally think of the Swarthmore Hardware Company at 11 South Chester Road. The hardware company carries a fine selection of electric appliances, heaters, toasters, percolators, hair dryers, electric irons, and more. A complete line of Rubbermaid products is also stocked there. This includes such useful items as dish racks and multi-purpose baskets. The Swarthmore Hardware Company is also your supplier of famous M.A. Bruder high-quality paints at a competitive price. As winter rolls around and it becomes time to refinish the frat houses, it's a good idea to keep this great selection of paints in mind. Varnishes, shellacs, and applicator brushes fall into the same category. Last, but certainly not least, you can have paint screws, nuts, and washes of every size and variety, as well as nails, light bulbs, and the usual hardware supplies which are so necessary. So make the Swarthmore Hardware Company a handy stop for you and DeVille. This has been the first half of the Swarthmore Hopkins football game. The halftime score is Swarthmore 28, Hopkins 0. Now we'll be sending you back to the station briefly, but don't go away because we'll be back in exactly three and one half minutes. This is WSRN, Radio Swarthmore 640 on your AM dial. For the next three minutes, we'll be providing you with some marching band music. But first, I have a couple of announcements. Tomorrow night, that's uh, Sunday, November 7th, WSRN will be having a special broadcast of the Symposium on Red China from Haverford. Some of the speakers will be Norman Thomas, William F. Ryan, and Professor John Mursky. Also, there will be a meeting this Sunday, November 7th, at 3.30 in Lodge 3 for all those who are interested in the Pomona Exchange Program. Last year's Pomona exchangees will be there to tell you about their experiences. Now we have about three minutes of music. WSRN, Radio Swarthmore, returning you now to Baltimore with Frank Brown and Mike Halpern for the Swarthmore Johns Hopkins football game. Hello again, everyone. This is Frank Brown along with Mike Halpern back here at Johns Hopkins for the second half of this Swarthmore Johns Hopkins football game. The score at halftime is Swarthmore 28 Hopkins. Zero, and it's nice to have that sort of a halftime speech for a change after all the speakers that we've been through this year. The second half of this game is brought to you by the Swarthmore Society of Quink and by the camera and hobby shop in the bill. We have some uh, team statistics on the first half that we'd like to bring you. First down, Swarthmore has gotten 12, Hopkins 1. One Hopkins uh, first down that pass play at the end of the uh, first quarter. In rushing, Swarthmore has picked up 230 yards on the ground in the first half. Hopkins has been held to minus 12. Passing, Swarthmore has gotten 78 yards in the air. The uh, big yard is coming on that 60 yards our pass play to uh, Taylor Cope. Hopkins has gotten 35 yards passing to Swarthmore's total yardage for the first half alone is 328 yards to 23 for Hopkins. Passes. Swarthmore has thrown four, completed three. Hopkins has thrown six, completed only one. This is primarily, I would have to say, of their quarterback, Mike Shaw, partly attributable to a great Swarthmore rush. The Swarthmore pass, the deep pass defense, though, has been fooled a lot of times, especially by Mike Odin, but the ball never got to him. So we are fortunate in that respect. 15 yards worth of penalties were called against Hopkins in the first half, 30 yards worth against Swarthmore. Swarthmore is just now returning to the field for the second half. Now, this word from our sponsor. Do you like throwing a frisbee around on the library field or playing a good, hard set of tennis? Perhaps ping pong is your game. In any case, if you need any athletic supplies, the camera and hobby shop at number six Park Avenue is the place to go in Portmore. There you can find sporting goods of all sorts, including the important glass guards for safety. 
With winter coming on, the college sweatshirts on sale at the camera and hobby shop should be very welcome. The cold weather also makes your bicycle a very important piece of equipment. There are bicycles and bike supplies of all kinds at the camera and hobby shop, along with flashlights and batteries. So why don't you stop by the camera and hobby shop at number six Park Avenue when you're in the Ville. You're bound to find an item that will be a very big help in the coming months. Hopkins now is showing sports more out on the field, and the rest are there too. Mike, I've noticed something interesting in, in the first half. In our past couple of games, we were playing against rather large teams who were sturdy on defense. There was strong boys, and as a result, our power play, Gager, were not our most successful play. Instead, it was Dick Newman just spinning around where the big boys, who were slower, couldn't get their hands on them. That was uh, making a big game. This play, uh, that twirling play of Newman, is not working because the top of the players are faster, but considerably smaller than uh, those we've played against in the past. And as a result, our uh, big our big weapon on the ground has been the power play, not the uh, not the uh, tricky little turning play. Hopkins will be receiving the kickoff for the start of the second half. I think you're right about that, Frank. You know, Jaeger looks about three inches taller and about 30 pounds heavier than he looks in the other game. That could be because the other fellows are that much smaller. But it looks like Rich can have his own way in the defensive uh, secondary. He can just run away from everybody. Be curious to see how much Coach Elverson plays his first unit here in the second half with a four touchdown lead. Mindful of the fact that next week the guard is facing PMC. Uh, that's the big game that faces the Garnet now for the rest of the season. Will he risk the uh, possibility of injury to any of his first liners, or will he go with a reserve here in the second half? Be curious to see what his strategy is. Frank, uh, we're about ready to kick off here. McCurdy is going to kick, and Odick is deep. I turn the play-by-play -play over to you. Thank you, Mike. On the kick team, we see Green. Jaeger, King, Lumberg, Stewart, Apple, Heyman, Weinstein. Here's the kick. Otis waiting for it on the 10. The 15 to the 20. He's putting on the speed as he comes to the left sideline. He's across the 30 to the 40. Across the 40 and finally brought down on about the 46 yard line by Razor, Apple, and Blumberg. Heyman tried to get Odick back at about the 20, dove and missed, and uh, that sprung Odick the extra 20 yards. Now Hopkins out of the huddle and set at the line of scrimmage. Shaw pitching out to Schaefer. Schaefer trying to turn the right end with McCurdy pursuing him. And McCurdy pulls him down on the 48-yard line as they reach the sideline. Frank, the complete first unit defense is in. And on that play, Dick McCurdy made a fine play because he was stiff armed and yet he hung on and grabbed that. Could have turned the corner unless uh, Dick had, hadn't held on there. Second down and about eight to go from the 48 yard line. Hopkins set. Shaw calls the signals. Going to throw and he is pulled at that down. Around the ankle, left for 88, Joe Thorne. Frank on that play, number 75, Bill Hunt, the offensive tackle of the Blue Jays, blocked Thorne. Thorne was on his knees. Quarterback came by, Thorne got up and tackled him. You should see the reaction on Mr. Hunt's face when he saw the man block and made the tackle. Loss of one on the play, and it's third and nine now from the... 47 and a half yard line of Hopkins. Shaw going straight back to pass and it's complete to Mike Odick on the 40 yard line. In between 
in between Chris King and Wilbur Green. King brings him down on the 40. Frank, what we've simply done on defense since Mike Sinclair isn't playing, we put McCurdy back in the defensive secondary, brought Kamen in to play linebacker. Thornton has gone out while number 73, Minnow Williams, is in on the defensive line. Minnow said he might be playing some defensive end today, and here he is for the first time. Shaw handing off to Schaefer, who was racked up as soon as he reaches the line of scrimmage. Fumble on the play, and let's see. Uh, Shannon falls on the ball, so it's second down and 10 to go. Frank uh, Bula Layton got a big arm in there and really hit the ball and carry it. He made the play on defense. Up with the ball on the 40. Time left in the third quarter, 13 minutes. They set the line of scrimmage. Shaw going back again to pass, and he is hit just as he goes to pass the pass. The short and wide to the left end. It was intended for Odick with uh, Jaeger and Stewart covering on the play, but the rush messed that one up again. Forthmore is winning this game essentially in the line. The way they got those two big victories against Stephen M. and Dickinson, it's nice to see again, Mike. Instead of the line of scrimmage at the 40. Shaw calling signals, again going back to throw. He tries to throw a screen pass to his halfback tally, but it was incomplete. It was overthrown. The flag goes down on the play. Heyman was covering on that. The referee is talking to Swarthmore. And it was a legal procedure. It's against Hopkins declined. So it will be fourth down for Hopkins. Fourth and ten from the 40. Let's see what they do. Apparently, apparently they'll be punting as uh, Newman drops down to about his own seven yard line, simple safety. Sweeney comes in for Shaw for Hopkins. Nickel will punt from his own 48-yard line. Again, a very low pass to center, but excellent block this time. The kick comes down to about the five-yard line. It goes out of bounds on the one. Newman didn't have much chance to run that back, did he, Max? So with the line drive sort of kick, he couldn't field it cleanly. And back inside the 10, uh, he'd like to let those alone. So the guard has their backs right on the goal line. I suspect that we'll see some power running right here. Since it has been so successful, it's liable to a loss. John Norman is in the game for fourth one. Summerton hands off right up the middle to Jaeger. Jaeger pulls his way across the five directions. Three tacklers with him up to the Eight-yard line. Tackle by Parsmore. Mike, it's nice when, you, when your backs are against the wall to have the only offensive weapon you use to also be your best one anyway. That's second down, four to go. Summerton hands off to Fraser. Fraser across the 10. To the 12-yard line. First down, Swarthmore. Tackle by Dennis Farazano. Swarthmore starting to grind it out on the ground again. Swarthmore out of the huddle. Summerton. Set under center. Going back, takes the handoff to Yeager. He's thrown for Taylor. Coach Taylor has it on the 37. And he is dragged down on the 45-yard line as he reaches the sideline by Callie, number 10. That's another first down for Swarthmore. That's a wobbly pass, Frank, but Cope had his man beat to pop the ball. You might uh, note that Lyle Snyder and John Norman are the ends, so we've taken out our two starting ends. 
before the game to replace that. Swarthmore set on zone 45. First and 10 backfield trips to right with Yeager flanked out right. Hand off to Fraser. Fraser goes around the right side, past midfield, down to about the Hopkins 48 or 47. Tackle on the play by John Sweeney of the Blue Jays. Ball spotted on the Hopkins 48. Where it will be second down and about three to go. Summerton brings the team out of the huddle. Hope now, flank left. Hand off to Sass, pulling up the middle. He gets to about the 45. He may have gotten the first down. We'll have to say. No, it's third down and about two feet to go on the 46. Time left in the period, 10 minutes exactly. Somebody brings the team out. He seeks forward himself, and I believe he got the first down. The one yard gain on the play for John Summerton. And they're calling for measurements, but it looks from here as if uh, they had the first down by about half the length of the football. Time is out now with nine minutes, 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Andy Weinstein come in for John Norman at the right end. Weinstein played on the first series of plays in the ball game, and Andy hasn't played there since. Uh, darn it, guys. That's right. Well, this is his third series now on end. All right, first down. First down, Swarthmore on the 45 of Hopkins. Going it once again, driving Pope flank left. Jaeger out a little bit to the right. Something hands off to Jaeger, coming around to the left side on a drop play. Jaeger goes over the left tackle spot, gains about four yards. Down to the 41-yard line where it will be second and six for Swarthmore. Oh, Danny uh, Ferenzano, number 65, Frank. You'd have to say he's basically two out of every three tackles on defense for the Blue Jays. Hope oh, again flank to the left. Summerton. Ball signal hands off to Fraser. Fraser going up the right side just off guard. He gets near a first down, about one yard short of a first down on the 36. Tackle by Arsenato. Third and one for Sparksmore on the Hopkins 36 yard line. Backfield, shift to the left where Coke is flanked. Left foot, Fraser in the flop, the handoff to Jaeger. Jaeger going up the middle, twisting and turning. He has the first down and more as he's down to the 32 yard line. First and 10 Garner. Right. They're just going right up the field. Started on the one and a half. Going almost 70 yards now and they're using up time. Swarthmore seems to be moving at will. This time as Taylor goes out to the left. The backfield shifts right. Summerton going back to throw. Throws over the middle to Jaeger. Jaeger has it on the 19 and he's going to go all the way for the touchdown. And it's fourth four thirty four. Hopkins, nothing. Time left. Seven minutes and forty five seconds in the third quarter. Jaeger, three going straight over the middle to about the nineteen. Everyone sort of converged on. By the time I got to him, he was in the end zone. Very well executed play. Uh, I think they've used it before in some other games. All right, here's the extra point. Hollister is going to hold. Pepper's going to try. Down the ball, down, place down, kick, it's up. It's good again, and it's five in a row for Pepper today. That drive went 99 yards in 10 plays. Big plays in this drive were the two pass plays that broke up the running of uh, Jaeger and uh, Fraser, two pass plays, one, Taylor Hope brought the ball from the 12 up, up to the 45-yard uh, line, Barthmore, which got them out of the hole, and then the 
touchdown pass play to Rich Yeager, summer to Yeager, for a 33 yards, Pepper kicks the extra point. McCurdy will kick off for the Garner. This is the second half of the Swarthmore Hopkins game brought to you on WSRN by the Society of Quink and the Camera and Hobby Shop in the Ville. McCurdy. This is the ball. It's a good long kick. Taken by Odick on the 10. To the 15, to the 20, to the 25. As he cuts to the right side, length to the 30, to the 35. And he's brought down by John Norman as he crosses the 40. Ball is spotted on the 42 yard line. And Mike, it looked for a minute like a nice break out to the open. He's put on a burst of speed as he hits the sideline. Well, we played that kick coverage very conservatively, Frank. A few guys held back. And when he broke by the initial fellas, there were a few guys that held back at 20 yards who had an angle on it. Hopkins set at the line of scrimmage. Parkmore this time in a quarterback. He hands off to to uh, halfback going to the uh, right side we can't see who it is it was number 21 Jeff Whiting he gained two yards on the play so it will be second and eight from the 44 yard line we'll see if we can spot the backfield now we have Parthmore in the quarterback for Hopkins we have Schaefer and Whiting as the principal running back Parthmore rolling to his left. He's going to pass intended for Weidig on about the 35, but it's thrown short. Covering on the play, Kamen and Jaeger. Frank, we have wholesale substitutions on the defense. That's the bottom. Eric Jacobs is in on defense. Fred Montgomery is coming to play defense. Number 66, George Crockett, a freshman, is in on defense. Black is in, so is Dot. I think that's about all. For Hopkins, Wally Sigurd's in for uh, number 21, Weidick. Parthmore set. Going back, rolls to the left, throws intended this time for Sigurd, but it's again short. As a matter of fact, it hits the referee. Pass hits the referee, who was wide open. Cayman wisely decided that if he had to cover someone, it would be better to cover Sigurd than the referee. Now out comes Parthmore. In comes Bill Nickel, who will punt for Hopkins. Their own 44. Newman back in single safety. That is 18. Incidentally, you mentioned the Crockett. This is the first action. He broke his hand the first week of school. The fine kick, even though the pass is going to bounce on the ground. Newman takes it on the 15, and he is brought down. He comes across the 20. Struck the 25 by Pete Stilt. Ball is spotted right on the 25, first and 10. Frank, my comment on this kicker, he's got some terrible finishes all afternoon, and he keeps kicking the ball way down the field. Very good punter. Wayne Patterson, number 24, has come in at flanker back. Taylor Cope goes out. I think lots of people for the first time. Randy Holland is quarterback and pitches to Newman. Newman turning the left side. He's to the 30, to the 35. He breaks into the open at the 40, to midfield, to the 40, to the 35, where he's finally brought down. But a flag was thrown way back on the fourth uh, floor, 32 yard line. Frank, the ref looks at Ray Sass. Ray Sass is looking at the ref and the ball comes back all the way. I think it would get called for some blocking and crack, either clipping or holding. Let's see what he calls. Ooh. <laughs> all the way back to the 16-yard line, clipping. Clipping on side, nullified a long gainer. First good run of the day, and now the ball is way back in the Sparkmore 16 yard line. Sparkmore coming out of the huddle. Holland set at quarterback backfield. Shifts left with Newman in the slot. Holland goes back, hands off to Sass. Sass gets nowhere. In fact, he loses one yard. Tackled by Bill Pat and the rest of the uh, Hopkins line. Everyone's mid Ray. They didn't get much to the Lost. One. 
Time left. Three minutes and 20 seconds. In the quarter. Now the referee, for some reason, is calling timeout. No, it's timeout hop. Society of Quake is proud to be a co sponsor of this game. This is the Sparkmore Managerial Society. They run the concession stands, the home games, and they also sell the programs. We hope you will patronize the society. This app is also being brought to you by the Cameron Hobby Shop in the Mill over WSRN. Frank, that scoreboard clock is moving right now. I, I, I wonder if they're catching it up. Or we're going to have some time trouble, I don't know. Well, the Blue Jays walking around down here under it. It's just up in Blue Jays. Uh, he hasn't that much to care about. We've got some good pickup basketball going on across the way. Matter of fact, uh, some pretty good ball players. This football game is going to go on now for. Another 20 minutes. Uh, the game is over, people. Back and forth. We're, we're going to win this game. And it's just a question of how badly. Buchanan is in an offensive tackle now as Holland pitches out to Newman. The same play that gains the long yards before as Newman turns to the left side and is driven out of bounds in time on the 22. Number 87, John Sweeney, was the man who uh, knocked him out. Oh, it's about to go on the 21. And there's 14 yards to go for the first down. Third and 14. Barthemore breaks the huddle, and now they go back into it. And now they come out again. That looks like a movie. Right, you know, they rerun it. Backfield just right. McCurdy flanked out to the right. The left side is Patterson. The handoff to Newman. Newman looked like he was going to throw the option pass, but he turns the right end to the 25 to the 30. To about the 34. That's uh, another penalty flag. Newman is getting up very slowly. He's going off the field now. There's a penalty on the play. They're calling for Odick captain there and discuss the name is obviously against us. Number 22 in the ball game for Newman. Dave Hilgers, and I believe Frank uh, was the first offense in this play. He was in on one of the kicks, I know, earlier in the game. That's right, Mike. Our um, players who haven't seen on the snow action all year are going to get quite a work after the last 19 minutes of this game. It's sort of nice to be in this situation. The call is slipping against Swarthmore declined because Swarthmore is going to be forced to punt with a situation of fourth and one and a half from the 34-yard line. Holland goes off and then comes Summer to do the punting. Dropping back to receive number 12, Mike Shaw. In double safety with Jim Talley. Here's the pick, Shaw. He's going to take number 36, he calls for a fair pass. That's on the 37, first and 10 for Hopkins on their own 37 with about three and a half minutes left in this quarter. So here's the help the scoreboard. John Summerton has been doing very good kicking for the Garnet, and that one sort of went off the side of his foot. And there was no run back, but it was a short kick. So Hopkins takes over the ball here, and let's see if they can do anything. Um, basically the same defense that was in before. Brockett for the first time is in the linebacker. Arthmore in for quarterback. He goes back to pass and he is hit immediately by number 84, Bob Nussbaum. And number 83, Tyler Coe. And the referee blew it dead before Parsmore could be driven into the ground. So, drops the ball back on the 31-yard line, a loss of six, so it's second and 16. And we have Jacobs and Dodson in the middle two men. Thornton at one end, Abbell at the other. 
Montgomery is the one outside linebacker, and Heyman is the other. Nussbaum and King are the other two linebackers. Arth, Arthmore setting over center. Going back to pass, no one's free, decides to run around the right side. He only gets two yards to the 33. Tackle, Jacobs is in on it. And Frank Apple. Let's go over that defense again. He's getting tough to pick up and boost in. Green and Yeager and number 80. John Ellis are the defense. Crockett and Heyman and Nussbaum, Montgomery are the backers. Hopkins makes a change of guard. Ray Nunnally in for Bill Patton. Hopkins lining up. Barthmore calls the signal. He's going back to throw. No one's free. Tries to run up the middle on the draw. Gets only to the 34 as Joe Thornton has him around the ankle. Joe has you around the ankle. It's a good idea to go down. Again, it was Thornton's reaction after he'd been blocked out. The man ran and Thornton jumped uh, off the ground and grabbed him. Very quick. Wayne Patterson, number 24, is waiting on the 27 yard line. He's dropping back down to about the 25 to receive the kick. Bill Nickel will do the kick. Let's see if it's another center pass. The bounce is on the ground. No, this time it's a good pass. And Nickel. Kick is not well. It's pretty good. It's time to take on the 24 to the 30 to the 35. Fumble at the attempt recovered by Hopkins. Let's see if we can spot who got it. Looks like John Sweeney, number 87, recovered Wayne Patterson's fumble, and Hopkins has the ball on the floor for 33. That was classic, Frank. He got hit right in the stomach, and the ball popped away. Good tackle. That might be, uh, no, they're going to get in another play in the quarter. Lined up. Arthur calling the signals. He goes back to pass. He's rolling to his right. Rolling. He's running to the 35, down to the 30. This is about the 27 yard line before he goes out of bounds. Bob Nussbaum knocked him out. Fine blocking by Hopkins is, uh, with a busted sort of pass pattern, and they picked up on the blocking very well. Some very good block thrown downfield by Hopkins on that play. Hopkins has the ball second and four on there uh, on the fourth floor, 27 yard line. About 40 seconds left in the quarter. The scoreboard is correct. Arthmore calls the signal, hands off on the draw play. Who is fullback? Fullback. Schaefer, Henry Schaefer, he goes across the 25 to about the 24, third and one on the 24-yard line of the far score. The scoreboard has run out of time for this quarter, waiting for the referee to agree on it. Now it's helping to line at middle safety for Wilbur Street. Farsmore calls the signal, rolling to the left, pitches out now. Number 14, Schaefer, going around the left side. He's down to the 22. He has the first down. Mike, that was quite an unusual pitch out. On that pitch out, the was sort of low on drive side. He threw it way up in the air and it's sort of wobbling around. But that's the end of the quarter. Is uh, Hopkins with the ball first and 10 on the fourth floor, 22, and the fourth floor leads 35 nothing. And here's a word from our sponsor. Are you a photographer? The camera and hobby shop at number six Park Avenue is the place for you in fourth floor. There will you, you will find cameras and films of all sorts, along with fine processing facilities. If you are a serious artist or just paint for relaxation, there are many varieties of art supplies available at the camera and hobby shop. If you have a hobby, there is bound to be something for you at number six, Park Avenue. One of the most important items you'll find on sale is the wide range of transistor radios. And if you like to tape songs off the radio or do tape recording as a hobby, there are tape recorders and blank recording tape on sale also. So when you're in the Ville, stop by the camera and hobby shop at number six, Park Avenue. They specialize in catering to a wide range of interests. 
Let's go in the first play of the third quarter. Parthmore. Parthmore going back to pass. He rolls to his right is known as three. He is hit by Thornton and Crockett and Nussbaum. Racked up for a loss. On, they spot the ball on the... Well, no, it's a game. It's a game. Of so what is it? The ball's on the 20. The loss is two. It's back from the 18. So it's second and 12 on the 20. Frank, Coach Elverton put in... Uh, four regulars in the last two plays on defense, so he's trying to tighten it up. Arthmore, calling his signals, going back and he's hit from behind by Thornton and Blumberg. He, he never saw those guys coming. He was looking downfield for Bill Nickel, who was trying to get free on the right side. He never saw what hit him. Warthmore line, once again, is dominating play. Ball is now spotted on the 25-yard line of Warthmore, so it will be third down and 18 for first down. Warthmore, set under center, calling the signal. He throws to Cowley over the middle. Cowley has it on the 15 and is brought down almost immediately by Taylor Cope and by number 60, John Stewart. That gets the ball back. Well, actually, they put it on the uh, 17. So it's fourth and nine. With 14 minutes remaining to be played in this football game, Hopkins, two deep to borrow the punt, so they'll be going for it. Parthmore rolling back to pass. Looking for, he was looking for Shacker, but it's intercepted by number 26, Chris King, on the 10-yard line. And a flag goes down in the play as King goes up to about the 15. Let's see what happens. Frank Parthmore did very well to throw the ball because Thornton really flew in on him and he hurt him on the play. Tremendously strong rush on the play by Thornton, and again he outseen the line on defense. They're talking over things with Randy Holland, number 12. Apparently the parent of penalty was against Hopkins. Holding, decline, and the Garner will take over first and ten. about the 13-yard line. To break the huddle, Holland says quarterback in backfield, shift to right. Holland calling his signals. Going back, he hands off to number 26, Chris King. Chris King, I believe, running his first play from the offensive backfield this year. And he's up to the 20-yard line before he's taken out. Is that right, Mike? Is this Chris's uh, first offensive uh, action was his first carry. He was in an entire team in the last quarter on offense. Holland set over center. Pitches out to, to Dave Hilgers, who is pulled down for a loss on the play. A loss of three yards back to the 17th, where it will be third down and five to go. Tackle on the play by Walt Sinkowitz. Backfield shifts left as Holland makes a call. He shoves the ball in the stomach of Hollister, fullback. And Alan Hollister gets back up to the 20, but there's a flag down. Baltimore's backfield was illegally in motion. It's of course, declined because it's now fourth down in a funny situation for Doris Moore. That fourth and three from the 20. Jim Parthmore going back in safety for Hopkins. He's standing on about his own 40 yard line. Callie is standing on about midfield. John Summerton back to punt. He'll punt from his own five. 
the high pass from Dennis Lawson summer to get to a good kick and taken by Cowley on the 42. Cowley up to about the 48 decides to turn around and go backwards and Swarthmore gives him no choice as, as Buchanan and Hamilton go in and drive him backwards to the 45 where the ball is placed down. Wayne Patterson came in on that play also. Uh, make a good play, covered the kick well. 12 minutes to go in this football game, 35 zip. Swarthmore calls timeout and is, is the score, as Mike just said, is 35 to zip. And there's really not too much you can say. Swarthmore has been pushing Hopkins all over the field thus far. The band plays bravely on, but Mike, I don't think there are a hundred fans in this game. Well, at this point, Frank, about the only thing that can be said is that a lot of fellas are getting some experience that they need. This should benefit the PMC on the right foot. Perhaps Minna was right when he said that these last three games are going to be just like the first two. Well, I hope so. Uh, next week, uh, big order. Not a day. Uh, Drex Dickinson is playing Western Maryland as a, in a crucial conference game. I'm curious to see who wins that. I'd be interested to see the statistics on this game. They might be a little frightening. Well, I'd say that just the first half has to be frightening when you have 330 some odd yards of the fourth mark and 23 nets for Hopkins that's rather one-sided. Right now, the best game on the field to pick up basketball game across the way is pretty close right now. All right, play it back in. Parthmore calling the signal, goes back, hands up to Schaefer. Schaefer has a hole, and he crosses midfield down to about the 45. Tackle on the play by Weinstein and number 80, John Ellis. And here's Mike. Okay, second down, a yard and a half to go. In Fort Moore territory on the 46. Parthmore rolls to his left. He's got an opening. He cuts back and he goes across the 45 to the 41 for a first down. Number 51, Steve Gessner, held on to make the tackle. First down for Hopkins. Frank, you think they can do it? Well, it, it really doesn't matter too much because it's not a number one defense. Okay. First and ten. Part more. A delayed handoff to number 31, Bob Shannon, and he swallowed, got swallowed up somewhere in the middle of the line. Dave Johnson, Jim Buchanan came in there to help make that stop. We have a very interesting defensive team right now. Boy, you wouldn't know it. Okay. Parthmore calls signal. Rolls to his left. He's going to try the option. No, he keeps it himself. He crosses the 35 and fights forward down to about the 34-yard line. That'll make it a third down situation, third and about three. Less than 10 minutes remaining in the football game. Okay, Hopkins comes to the line of scrimmage. Parthmore, Paul signal, fumbles the head snap from center and dives forward. Eric Jacobs falls on everybody. And let's see. No, he got a yard out of that. Yeah, fourth and two. Uh, nice dead living by fourth one. Nice dead living by Halper, too. All right, center comes from the line. That's Pearl Mother. He's going to snap it. Fourth more. He hands to number 14. 
Schaefer, he dives forward. It's very close to a first down. Very, very close. I think he has it, but I don't want to follow Marty Glickson, so we'll wait for a minute. And they're going to measure. There's timeout now while they measure. They have an expression for this thing in baseball. It's called the laughter. It's good to relieve tension sometimes. <laughs> I certainly uh, think the team needed this one. Uh, after the past two games, it's the first time for Hopkins, and they're on the move. Uh, this second half is being brought to you by the Cameron Hobby Shop in Brazil. Your center for Cameron Hobby Supplies. And by the Swarthmore Society of Quink. Odick flanks out to the right side. Weinstein plays him head on head. The handoff to Schaefer who pulls his way forward. Down to the 26, 27 yard line. So Hopkins is on the move here. Second and five on the 27. Morris Moore calls signal. Odick flanks to the left now. He's looking for Odick. He's rolling to the right. He's going to throw. Odick has it, drops it on the seven yard line. Nice maneuvering by uh, Parsmore back there. He seems to uh, be able to move around and still see downfield very well, Frank. Because he has the ability to uh, throw on the run. That was a very accurate pass. He just went off Odick's fingertips and landed on the goal line. Seven and a half minutes to go in the football game. Odick flank left. Draw play to Schaefer. He's got a hole. He's moving downfield very nicely. He's across the 20 yard line to the 19, where he's brought down by Andy Weinstein with a good tackle. That's, that gives them the first down. Let's see. There's a penalty on the play. And it's against Swarthmore, and they're going to, that moves the ball way back into Garnet territory. It's going all the way down to the seven yard line, I believe. Pulling the face mask on the Garnet. And it's first and goal for Hopkins, and the bench gets off. The Hopkins bench gets on his feet, and everybody's watching this, says, here's a big chance. Time has been called here with seven minutes, ten seconds to go in the game. The Garnet leads 35 to nothing. They'd like to score here, not be shut out. They have an excellent chance. First and goal on the seventh. And the Hopkins band begins to play. It would seem that Hopkins has the rather tough schedule for its remaining two games after this. Next week, they'll be at Dickinson. And I don't welcome anyone who's got to play Dickinson now to have squared away with their new players after the injuries to their uh, pullback and end just before the Swarthmore game. And then they close against Western Maryland, which is also a strong team and is playing Dickinson today. And I could be nice if Western Maryland could pull an upset there with a Enable us to breathe a little easier. Throw with Frank. Okay, back in action here. Mars Moore over center. Calling the signal. He gives the Schaefer. No, he's fake. He's got he's got a touchdown. Touchdown pass to Odick in the left corner. Over Tarek. Open. There's a fight. They're smashing each other. Well, out of bounds there, and that's broken up very quickly. They're throwing penalty markers all over the place. It's a touchdown, I believe. Boy, they really went at it there. Hope and Odick threw punches immediately there. Mike, what happened was that Odick very obviously had the touchdown. He was about seven yards deep in the end zone. And you know, as soon as he caught it, Hope grabbed him and tried to drag him down. And Odick couldn't think of any reason for Taylor to try and do this because he'd already scored the touchdown. I, Odick is very mad. He's been put on the sideline for coaches are holding him uh, right now. He may have been thrown out of the game. 
by the way, Frank, Taylor Cope has been playing a few extracurriculars this afternoon. He hit a few guys after he counted several times. And on Jaeger's touchdown run, he hit a man seven yards in the end zone after Jaeger was in the end zone. That'll happen to you. Try that. All right, here's the extra point. Two point try. The pass is complete to number 23 who drops it in the end zone. Wally Siggers in the halfback had it in the end zone and then dropped it. Good pass by uh, part of one. My that was a that was a very fast sight as uh, Siggers had started to drop and go it on the side and then landed on his belly with the ball on the feet. Hopkins went 45 yards to this touchdown. It was a uh, it was a nine play drive. Then it was mostly Henry Schaefer who did all the uh, big ground gaining until the uh, final touchdown passed seven yards from Farnsmoor to Oda. And so the score is 35 to 6 Farnsmoor with six minutes and 40 seconds of that left in the ball game. And they, they called a personal foul on Taylor, on Taylor Cope on that touchdown play, I think. I'd, I'd rather on Otis. So as a result, uh, Hopkins will be taking to that 25 instead of 40 to 22. See the gun in the front line. Sending them up to 38 instead of uh, at their own 40. Off. Up in the air, it's a short kick. It's coming down around the 40. It bounces there. Number 21, Frazier picks up, circles back to his 35, back to his 30, back to his 25, up to his 30, and he's held under it. Everybody jumped on uh, Toby there, about four men. And the guard will take over first and 10 on the 29. All right, Patterson flanks out to the left. King is uh, in the backfield uh, along with Frazier, and it looks like Jaeger. Holland fakes King, pitches out to Frazier, who turns upfield and hits on the 36-yard line. Around the right end. It'll be second down and about three yards to go for the first down. Patterson again flying to the left. Back to the shift to the left. Holland gives the Jaeger and Jaeger across the 40 yard line to the 41, and that's the first down for the Garner. They're grinding it out again. Frank, the full board clock dies. That's important. For quite a while here. We don't know how much time there's left. Holland, good faith, gives the king, I believe. And Chris comes up to the 44 yard line where he's tackled by number 87, John Queen. Second and seven. On the 44, Holland over center, Holland safety, backfield, just to the left. Holland back to pass, roll right. He's going to throw long for Kamen. It's overthrown. He was double covered by number 12, Mike Shaw, number 31, Bob Shannon. There was no chance for a completion. He was way downfield, around the 25 to 20 yard line when the ball came down. So I'll make it third and seven. And the scoreboard clock just came to life again. Third down play. Backfield shift to the left. Number 22 is now in the backfield. Hilger. Here's the pass. Beautiful catch by McCurdy. He's down to the 40, down to the 30, 
seven yard line into the Hopkins territory. A fine pivoting catch by Dick McCurdy on a little swing pass out to the right side from Randy Holland. That's a first down for the Garnets, and they're driving again. Timeout is taken on the play by the referee. Four minutes to go in this football game. Time now, back in. First and ten, the ball is on the 37. Patterson flank to the left, the backfield shifts to the right. Holland gives the ball to Hild Hildred, the quick burst over tackle down to the 31 and a half yard line. Ball seemed to pop up in the air a little, but he held it. Number 85. Lyle Snyder comes in at number 88. Joe Thornton goes to the sideline. Joe has certainly played well in the game. He's been one of our most consistent performers all year. You can't say enough for him. Hey, Holland. Ball signals back to the ship to the right. Patterson flanks to the left. Gives to the third man through McCurdy. He gets away. He down, spins down to the 21-yard line. For number 12, Mike Shaw trips him up. There's a flag on the Fred Webster is now in an offensive center for the Garner. Well, that's 15 yards, looks like, Frank. McCurdy goes off now. Ball moves all the way back to the Hopkins 43 yard line. Make it. They have 15 yards to go for the first down. Long call signal gives it to Hilgers. Followed up on the 42. King, Hilgers, number 31, Bob. Alan Hollister, one of the backfield men for the Garnet right now. Backfield shoots to the right. Holland, back to pass. He's rolling left. He lost it to Patterson, who makes a fine catch down on the 27. He took it right away from number 10. Jim Callie was defending. Patterson caught the ball, and it's very close to a first down. It's down on the 27 and a half yard line. Fine catch, Frank. Well, Wayne uh, made up for that fumble on that play. It was a wobbly pass. Randy Holland was rushed. It looked like the defensive back had a pretty good chance for an interception, but Wayne uh, grabbed the ball. Well, on that rush, the uh, left defensive end for Hopkins broke in, and the only man who was left back to the block for Holland was Chris King, who was on the other side, waiting for the right defensive end who never did break through, and he was unable to pick up, pick up the rusher. Okay, crucial fourth down and less than one to go for a first down. Holland gives the ball to King, and King carries everybody across the 25 for the first down, and the Garnet continues to move. Number 67, Ray Nunnally was the big man on the stop. Number 50, Steve Gessner leads the field. That's it for our co-captain of this week. Eric Jacobs over the ball. Holland calls signals. He rolls right. He's got running room. He's across the 25. He runs into his own blocker and is finally stopped around the 21, 22 yard line by Nunnally again. So Randy Holland picks up about three yards. That'll make it second and seven. The clock is running. Garnet leads 35 to nothing. We're not sure how much time is left, but there's not much. Maybe less than two minutes, actually. And on the scoreboard, it's only it's exactly two minutes. Well, it's a little bit behind. Here's a funny shift to the right. Holland, back to pass, throws. It's intercepted by Nunnally. He gets away from two men. He gets away from a 30. He's at the 30. And he's forced out of bounds by number 26, Chris King on the 33-yard line. Penalty was illegal motion, 
I knew that switch was funny. On Swarthmore, and it naturally declined, and Hopkins takes over the ball, first and 10 on the 34-yard line. Not only made three consecutive defensive plays. An excellent run back by Nunnally, who uh, intercepted on about the 20-yard line, and, and as Mike said, escaped from three successive tacklers before uh, the sideline intercepted him. He's six feet, 175, and he's a guard, right? So uh, I knew he <laughs> looked a little too swift there to be a uh, big lineman. All right, there's timeout right now. In the waning moments here, 35 to nothing. Bob Reza, number 22, has come in for Hopkins from placing number 21, Jeff Whitehead. Odick is uh, still standing on the sideline, cooling off. He's still not too happy from the looks of things. I have to say that uh, the two guards, uh, Sarazano and Nunnally, have played a good ball game for Hopkins. Uh, they made almost all their tackles. Okay, first and ten. Parthmore gives on the draw to Schaefer, and he's across the 40-yard line to the 41, where Cope, Buchanan, and Nussbaum, and Dodson all combined to stop him. Timeout on the play. Hopkins. All the time to stop the clock. Now, a word from our sponsor. If you like throwing the frisbee around on the library field or playing a good hard set of tennis, perhaps ping pong is your game. In any case, if you need any athletic supplies, the Cameron Hobby Shop at number six Park Avenue is the place to go in Sparsmore. Incidentally, they also have. And very good isometric sets and exerciser equipment. There you can find sporting goods of all sorts, including the important eyeglass guards for safety. And now back to play. Part more cold. Signal. Second and two. He's rolling to his left. He's looking a little swing pass to Schaefer, who's wrapped up by McCurdy, back on the 39-yard line. He loses the yardage on the play, and that'll make it third and oh, four yards, four and a half. Time out for half. Now at the Cameron Hobby Shop, with winter coming on, college sweatshirts on sale should prove be very welcome to Fourth more students. Cold weather also makes your bicycle a very important piece of equipment. There are bicycles and bike supplies of all kinds at the camera and hobby shop, along with flashlights and batteries. So why don't you stop by the camera and hobby shop at number six Park Avenue when you're in the Ville. You're bound to find an item that will be a very big help in the coming months. Frank, we have an injury uh, for Hopkins, the 78, Art Pinato. Looks like a... Uh, throat or shoulder injury. You see uh, how he is. Play is back in. Parsmore called signals. Rolling right to throw. He's going to throw a long pass to number 84. He's got it on the 30-yard line. And he's tackled by number 80, John Ellis. Bill Nickel caught that ball on the 30, tried to cut back. And timeout is called by Hopkins. The ball is being placed down at the 30 two and a half yard line in Swarthmore territory. A fine pass by Parthmore who rolled right, threw back to the left side. So Hopkins trying to come put some points on the scoreboard. Has the first and ten on the Swarthmore 32 and a half. Very little time remaining.
We know there's less than a minute remaining, we just don't know how much left. The injury to Panato, as near as we can see, has nothing to do with his shoulder. It looks like it's something to do with his face. He's holding his head. Three-quarter score, just announced he may have parted Maryland, 19, Navy 7. Back to the play-by-play. -play. Mark Moore, rolling right, looking, he's rolling. Cope has got it on the five, and he's tackled by number 82, Walt Sinkowitz. And Taylor Cope comes up with another interception, and uh, Swarthmore takes over on their own five, and that should be the ball game. Taylor's made, what, two interceptions today? Swarthmore that pass to reach Bill Nickel, not Taylor Cope. And Joe was bad on the goal line, but the pass was underthrown, and that's what happened. All right, Holland, rolling into his end zone. He tripped up, oh, but he keeps his feet. He's up to the five, and, and he finally rolled it down by several blue jerseys. And that's, that's the football game. Final score, fourth for 35. Hopkins, nothing. Scoreboard just flashed to six, but that's wishful thinking. Final score, 35 to six. We'll review the uh, scoring of this game. Swarthmore scored 28 points by halftime. They had the game really wrapped up by then at 28-0. Uh, it didn't take too long, in just under five minutes into the game, Toby Fraser went over from the three-yard line, capping a 12-play, 61-yard drive. Zach Pfeffer kicked the extra point, and it was 7-0. With a minute 45 left in the quarter, Sparksmore and finished up a 10-play, 56-yard drive as Rich Yeager uh, pulled his way in from the 10. Again, it was Pfeffer's kick, adding the point. They made it 14 nothing. About a minute and a half into the second quarter, Rich Yeager intercepted a pass from Mike Shaw. He returned it to the Swarthmore 32, then took only one play, a 68-yard pass play from Parthmore to uh, Taylor Cope in the end zone for the third touchdown. Bembers kick made it 21 zip. The, uh, the final touchdown came after a Hopkins fumble. Red Webster uh, recovered it when Parthmore fumbled on the kickoff at the 34. And uh, Parthmore, then with the help of two penalties, got the ball down to the three-yard line from where Summerton pitched out to Newman, who then threw to Andy Weinstein. And that was the final touchdown. In the second half, Parthmore scored once more uh, only three minutes, three and a quarter minutes into the second half, as they had a 99-yard drive on 10 plays, the touchdown play was a 33-yard pass from Summerton to Rich Yeager, who went right up the middle. Beffert kick made it 35-0, and then with 7-10 remaining in the game, Hopkins finally made it onto the scoreboard as they went 45 yards on a short drive, the scoring play being a seven-yard pass from Parthmore to Mike Odick, the attempt for two-point conversion, intended pass, no good. So that made the final score 35 to 6. We have some uh, final team statistics on Swarthmore, and Mike, you were right, they are frightening. Swarthmore picked up 19 first downs in the game, got 235 yards rushing and 161 passing for a net of 396. Uh, Swarthmore 6 for 10 on passes and was penalized 45 yards. We'll be getting the uh, 
how consistent in the second, let's see, they had seven first downs. They had 37 yards rushing, 97 passing, going four for 13. So their net yardage was 134 yards. The fourth four I came to by uh, just a little bit, Mike. Well, I do want to give them those six points, though, that I pleasantly forgot about. We hope next week uh, that Garnet can keep it up. Next week we take on PMC at home. This is going to be the biggest game of the season for the Garnet. We're now 4-0 in the conference. If Dickinson won today, they're what, 5-1, Frank? 6-1. Drexel also is still in it as they've only lost once. The game will be a home game, and it'll be the most crucial game of the year. So why, not, why doesn't everybody come on down and see the game? It should be a very exciting one. Then, Mike, after the PMC game, we'll wrap up the season at Haverford, the football game for the Hood Trophy. WSRN is going to uh, broadcast that game, but they're not going to air it live because we'd like everyone to come out since Haverford is so close. And and anything can happen uh, in one of these Hood Trophy games. However, uh, we will air the tape on Sunday night at 7 o'clock, so we hope you'll be listening in then. And now we'd like to thank our statistician, Jim Levin, who is who's filling in for Jim Perry. We hope that Jim's okay. He's in the hospital. And now for Mike Halpern and for Jim Levin, this is Frank Brown saying so long. Once again, the final score, Forthmore 35, John Hopkins 6. This has been a WSRN Sports presentation. This is WSRN Radio Sportmore 640 on your dial. Mike Allen back in the studios with about 20 minutes of music to celebrate by. As you know, support for our one, 35 to 6. Now we have Horace Jankowski with a little walk through Bavaria. <laughs>